Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to generate an accounts receivable report for your Microsoft Access order entry and invoicing database. Today's question comes from Jamarcus from Reno, Nevada, one of my gold members. Jamarcus asks, I've been using your invoicing template for a while now. It's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. How can I generate an accounts receivables list based on the data in here? Well, Jamarcus, an accounts receivable list is a fancy word for saying who still owes you money. Okay. In a lot of businesses, you have a cash system where I give you something, you give me money. Okay. But business to business transactions, sometimes you have net terms, net 20, net 30. So payment is due within 30 days of receiving your invoice. So an accounts receivable list is basically who's due that hasn't paid me. Okay. Now you can get a little fancier and I'll cover this for you guys in the extended cut. You can get a little fancier and say who's current. In other words, they're not due yet. So you still know the money's coming in. Who's late, but less than 30 days late, less than 60 days, less than 90 days and so on. And I cover that in my full access expert level 27 course, but in the extended cut, I'll show you how to do a simple aged accounts receivable. But right now, for the rest of the world, let me show you guys how to generate a simple accounts receivable list so you can see who's due that hasn't paid yet. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help free template. It's a free download, by the way, everyone. You can grab this from my website if you want to. I'll put a link down below in the links section. Go get a copy. Now, in here, we've got our customers, and each customer can have orders. Now, in here, we only have an order date. So if you have customers with different terms, you might want to also put a due date in there. All right. So if you give, let's say, net 30 terms, you know, 140 goes in there, and then 30 days in the future, you'd have your due date. For the purposes of class, though, I'm not going to add a separate field for due date. We'll just simulate it with a query. So let's go to create, and then we'll go to query design. And I'm going to turn this property sheet off. Here's my blank query. Let's bring in the order table. And just so I can see the customer's information, let's link it to the customer table. Now, if you've never done this before, I've got other videos on relationships. Go watch those first. I'll put a link down below. So for accounts receivable, I want the order ID. Let's bring in the customer ID. And just to see it here, we'll bring in the first name and the last name so we can see who the customer is. Now, we don't actually have the order total saved in the order table. It's a combination of stuff from the order detail table, right? So let's go over to our queries and bring in the order detail queue. All right, this guy has right down here the extended price. So we need that, okay? And if you don't know what this is, go watch my invoicing videos where I built this template in, okay? That's all free. Okay, let's close down Add Tables. And let's go ahead and save this. Control S. Let's call this my Accounts. I can't spell today. Accounts Receivable Q. All right, my Accounts Receivable Q. Now, if I run it at this point, you'll see each order with the customer information and the extended price. Now, this is the total of each line going across. So to get an order total, we have to create an aggregate query. And again, if you've never made an aggregate query before, I got videos on that. I'll put links down below. Go watch the aggregate query video first. All right, also called a totals query. Click the little totals button here. Now this stuff is all the same. So we want it all grouped by, right? Group by order ID. Okay, now change for the extended price, change this to sum. So I'm gonna group these all together and then give me a sum of the extended price, which gives me the order total. Run it now, there you go. All right, and I've only got three orders in here, two of them for me. Let's go put some stuff in this third order here. Let's save changes. Let's go to the customer form, go to orders. I've got an order three here, but there's nothing in it. Let's put some data in here real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, so there's some stuff in there now. Let's take a look at our query now. There we go. All right, three orders, two from me, one from Jimmy Kirk. All right, there's a sum of extended price. Now, in your accounts receivable, you only want to see orders that are not paid. So I'll go back to design view, bring down is paid. And I like to keep the stuff that's grouped together all together over here. All right. For criteria, whoops, turn that back on. For criteria, set that equal to no or false. 
All right, that's a query criteria. Again, if you don't know what query criteria are, go watch my criteria video. Okay, run it now, and you'll see. Now, I still see those same three orders because all of them are paid. Let's mark one of them as paid. This guy here is paid. Oh, we can't change this. Notice I'm clicking and nothing's happening. It's a not updatable record set, right? And this happens sometimes, especially with an aggregate query. Once you aggregate stuff, you can't edit the values in there. And you can see that there's no row down here to add a new record. All right, and if you're curious to learn more about that, I also have a video on that, why some record sets are not updatable. I'll put a link to that down below, too. That's pretty fascinating. So to mark that record paid, we're going to have to close the query, save changes, sure, go into the order, which is right there, and we'll mark it paid. All right, so that one's paid. So now if we go back to our accounts receivable, it doesn't show up there. Okay, what's the next factor to take into consideration? Whether it's due yet or not. All right, so back into design view. Let's add the order date. And again, I'm going to bring that over here. All right, now we're going to, we're going to assimilate simulate i sound like i sound like the borg now assimilate right we're going to simulate the due date by just giving everybody net 30. so the due date colon is going to be order date plus 30. that's how you add days in access right a day is one so plus 30 means take this date and add 30 to it this is a calculated query field and again if you don't know what that is I got videos on that. Go watch the calculated query field video. Okay, so if I run this now, now I can see there's the due date, which is 30 days after the order date. Okay, now today is March 30th. Okay, so technically only this guy is due. All right, because this one was, excuse me, I got him backwards. This one is due. This one is not due yet. Okay, so let's put a query criteria on due date. All right, and what does it got to be? It's got to be less than today's date. So just date like that. Okay, that's date open close parentheses. Let me zoom in so you can see that better. There it is. See that? And usually you don't need the open and close parentheses because it's a reserved word in access. Date has a special meaning. It's a function, but I like to put that on there because it's it's technically it's a function. You should have it there. All right. Now if I run the accounts receivable query, there you go. I'm only seeing that one order that is that has a due date before today all right if you want to make that less than or equal to today's date you can although technically it's not late if it's due right now okay whatever you want all right save that there's your accounts receivable query right there all right open that up let's put one more order in the system just to just to have more data in here let's go to uh will Riker. let's put an order in uh some stuff and what did he order? He ordered uh, triple food. All right. Three of those at $15. And he placed this order on February 1st, let's say. And it's not paid yet. All right. So close that. Close that. And now let's check our accounts receivable queue. And there it is. Want to see just how late this is? How many days it's late? Welcome into here. Let's widen this out. Now, days late... You'd think you could just say take today's date and subtract the due date. All right, watch what happens, though. Look at that. It's asking you for due date. Why is that? Well, it doesn't know what due date is yet. Okay? Due date is a result of the aggregate, and the aggregate doesn't figure this out until after it runs, so you can't ask for this ahead of time. Now, you could do it this way in a second query. You could take all this and load that into a second query, and then you could very easily calculate days late. But you can't do this before due date is generated. See, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> all right, it's got to calculate this first. Once that runs, you could feed accounts receivable into an accounts receivable too, and then you can calculate days late that way. But since we know that due date is basically order date plus 30, we just do this. Order date plus 30 there. See that? This is the same calculation that's performed over here. So that should work. All right, that one's 45 days late. That one's 27 days late. But I wanted to show you that because if you see that pop-up message, it's the same thing you'll see if you do that. Anytime you see this little pop-up message, all right, that means Access doesn't know what that field is. 
chances are one of two things happened. Either A, it doesn't know what it is because it hasn't calculated it yet, or B, you spelled something wrong like I just did there. Usually it's spelling. All right, but in an aggregate query like this, it can't figure out what order date is yet because it hasn't calculated it yet. All right, so you have to either substitute that with something that it does know or feed this into a second query. And now, there's my days late. Okay? So right? So right. Want to learn more? In the extended cut for members, we do aged accounts receivable. And we put together a nice, pretty printable report where we've got current items, items that are due but not due yet, less than 30 days old, 30 days old or more, and the total. That's covered in the extended cut, 20 minutes long for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's well over 100 of them now, so there's plenty of stuff to watch. And if you really want to learn more in my Access Expert Level 27, I cover aged accounts receivable in much more detail. And we do multiple columns, for example, less than 30, 30 to 60, more than 60, and so on. I'll put a link to this down below in the link section. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.